Welcome back to the lockup. Last time we were thrown in jail for a crime we did not commit. This time we'll probably escape the maximum security facility designed by our grandfather, using all of the adventure game skills we should have learned in the late 80s and early 90s. Specifically, we need to look at everything of interest in the room, starting with the moss, and then the ball and chain, And finally, the most interesting thing, the locked door. With all that out of the way, we need to use Adventure Game skill number two. Sitting around and doing nothing. If there's one thing that's drastically overused in this game, it's sitting around and doing nothing. We'll see more of it later. In fact, even in the same scene. Anytime now. Thank you. The line is slightly mangled, but the gist of it is that they're going to give Will bread, but they aren't going to give him any water. And hopefully he dies soon. Honestly, I have a tough time believing that bread, even the worst bread, is worse than snail pie. Anyways, let's wait some more. You know, maybe that bread really was worse, because Will is about to trip some serious balls. Serious balls. This is a but thou must choice, we have to pick yes. This is a bit of a non sequitur, but okay, talking magic flute. Terrible like this translation. Well, none of that made much sense, but now we have a destination and a quest to carry out, so we really need to get out of here. All that stuff about crystals and the like just... Well, it doesn't make any sense, and it's not going to make any sense for a very long time, if ever. Kara sends the world's worst sympathy card. Sorry to hear that you're in jail. But at least she sent the goods along as well. Now that we have the key to the door, after all that waiting and examining of things and tripping out, we can get out of here and get on with the first dungeon of the game. First we'll use the red jewel that we picked up last time, and then we'll get out of here. But since we're good Samaritans, let's go and let this guy out as well.
Doing this has no effect on the game, but it makes me feel a little better as a person. There's also a conveniently located dark space where we can learn more about the basic flow of dungeons. What Gaia says is absolutely correct. This game features a character advancement system based on brutally murdering everything in your path. Every time you completely clear a room of enemies, you'll get a power-up to one of your stats, health, strength, or defense. Since this is the first dungeon, it's going to be filled with nothing but enemies directly stolen from Zelda, starting with these bats. Killing them all gives us a health power-up. Our health is in the top left corner, represented by those dots. A small dot, like the one on the right side of the row, is 1 HP, the big dots are 2. And the same goes for the enemy health, which you can see on the top right-hand corner. Killing enemies leaves behind gems similar to the one that our Talking Magic Flute Ghost Dad dropped. The one Talking Magic Flute Ghost Dad dropped was worth 5, on the counter that you see in the top middle of the screen. These small ones are only worth 1. They're essentially coins, like in a Mario game. Collecting 100 of them will give us an extra life. Killing this makeshift Zora down here opens up another path to the skeleton to our right. Normally we wouldn't be able to kill the skeleton, but once the blocks are cleared away, it's back to murdering. Killing enemies to open up new paths is going to be a constant theme of the game. Of course, some enemies like to hide, and that's when this radar comes in handy. You can see all of the enemies marked as those little blue heads. You can also see all the chests. It's essentially a compass without a map. It's pretty cool. You may have noticed that I was able to draw in the gem by twirling the flute. That's the same pressing R or L that we use to move the stone statues, like in the first video. You might have noticed that there are two different attacks that I've been using. One of them is the basic sword, or rather flute, stab that you get by just pushing the attack button. For the other one, the one that does more damage and involves will leaping, you attack once and then press in the direction that you just attacked. We picked up an extra point of strength for killing all the enemies in that room, so now we're doing two damage instead of one. This is our first actual test of using Will's powers to solve a quote-unquote puzzle. It's not a whole lot of a puzzle, all you have to do is move the head out of the way. But, oh. Well, that doesn't happen often. There appears to be something following us around that doesn't want us to stab it. If that's the case, then it probably shouldn't get in our way, but I'll do my best to oblige. Not exactly the most useful device, as demons are everywhere. You notice that I failed to do it there, but the fireballs that are spit out by the Zora one of these can be blocked by twirling the flute and using the telekinesis ability. That bigger gem that isn't quite as big as the one Talking Flute Magic Ghost Dad dropped is worth two. A lot of the challenge in killing all the enemies results in the fact that they like to hide them to you. There's often multiple paths that you can take in a dungeon. One of them will take you to the next exit. But oftentimes, even on complete dead-end paths, you'll find that there are enemies waiting for you that have to be destroyed if you want to get the upgrade for that room. We'll see more of that in the next dungeon. For now, it's pretty straightforward, although I still missed a guy. Notice that this path doesn't actually take us to anything useful, but there's still a guy there guarding a point. Well, not exactly guarding the point of defense, he just happens to be the last enemy in the room, so killing him gives us a point of defense. Each point of strength increases the amount of damage we do by one, and each point of defense decreases the amount of damage we take by one. That time I managed to block the fireball. These arrows are startlingly non-threatening, despite the fact that they look positively dangerous. They're not really going to hit you unless you really try to let them. Movement in close quarters can be rather difficult. In fact, it's sometimes hard to tell what will or will not hit you. Normally, if you're below something in close quarters, it's not going to hit you, but if you're above it, all bets are off.
That switch is not responding to violence. That means that in order to press it, we'll have to use extraordinary amounts of violence. In this case, we're going to leap on it from above. Voila! Doing so gets us to this chest, which contains a red jewel. Let's use that quickly and talk to the little fireball in the corner. It's not so much fireball as it is a spirit. The spirit adds a little detail to our Mario coin analogy. When you die in this game, if you have no lives, you go back to the start of the dungeon and any transformations engaged in are lost. If you have at least one life left, you'll restart at the nearest dark space you use with your transformations intact. I believe I spied the little dandelion that was flying around earlier head off to the left. Pressing these switches doesn't do anything, so let's talk to a flower. The flower advises us to take the Zelda way out and play the song we learned. Playing the song doesn't actually do anything, but it does convince the strange voice that we're worth helping. So let's follow along. This is not particularly challenging, but for some reason I have a lot of trouble with this sort of thing. Squaresoft played this game, by the way. They were so enamored by this particular Switch quote-unquote puzzle that they felt a need to put it in Final Fantasy VII in the uh, second Mako reactor scene. In the next room, there's a switch we just can't reach. Hmm, I wonder if we'll get some kind of upgrade to help us fix that in the near future. But first, let's cut a swath through all these enemies. Block some shots. Draw in some gems. Yes, we're having a good murderous day. You'd think that having all of these pseudozoras there would be a bit of a challenge, given that you can only block projectiles that hit directly in front of you. But they don't attack all at the same time. That circle on the radar represents a dark space. Uh, that'll be important in the future in order to find dark spaces. What is this? Well, Will's been hearing voices in his head, his head again. Not sure if that's still a result of the bread, but this time it seems to have a more physical effect on him. Transforming him into his murderous alter ego, the Dark Knight Frieden, or Fred for short. Talking to Gaia heals us. So it's good to do it whenever we can. Now while his name is Frieden, I prefer Fred because it's short and easy to say. It's quite the opposite of his sword, which is longer and hits far harder than anything Will can muster. In general, Frieden's sword is about twice as powerful as Will's flute. In this case, it's only doing one damage more than usual, because we only do one damage to this enemy. Note that this enemy is just a brown palette swap of the skeletons we've been fighting. In general, a palette swap enemy is far more difficult. That skeleton can actually be dangerous, and in one practice run, I completely forgot that its head detached and had to be killed as a separate enemy. And it got me good. These bats, however, will go down in one hit. And the skeletons in two. Maneuvering here is actually slightly tricky. As you can see, chests also appear on the radar, with a conveniently uh, chest-shaped icon. This one has a red jewel. 
by my count, we've got six in the bank now. Another brown skeleton bars the way, and that one actually managed to lay a finger on me. This can be a bit of trouble, because while Frieden's attack strength is far greater than Will's, his defense strength is the same. Fortunately, that defense strength is now plus one. And with that, we've completed the dungeon. No boss, because it's more of a tutorial than an actual legit dungeon, even though as far as dungeons go, it is as legit as they get. When we finish one, we have to transform back into Will, which sucks. Examining the barrels from the left gives us nothing, but examining them from the right gives us the red jewel. How he couldn't find it from the left, I don't know. But that makes seven, which means that we should have some nice rewards waiting for us from Jem the Jeweler when we get back to town. Well, even though Grandma Lola tries to poison us every day, I guess she loves us enough to send a magic transforming flower girl to come get us. Lily is actually just awesome. In, at least in the early going, she's by and far the best character. Now, since Kara was nice, nice enough to uh, send us that sympathy card and key, I suppose we should go get her out. I hope I don't regret this. The guard is fortunately asleep, but the princess is not. Don't act like you knew I was coming. Will's line has unfortunate subtext. Not sure what she means by pig power, but I'm willing to believe her, considering that the pig was able to push me out from in front of the doorway last time. Anyways, let's get out of here before the incredibly slow Edward Castle go- oh, wait. Well, it's not that far back, it's just South Cape, but I understand your meaning. Food in one of these... Oh, you mean the only open barrel in that entire segment. The extremely slow text crawl informs us that we have a yummy roast leg of yak. The use for this is not immediately apparent. Don't worry, Kara, the, uh, the soldiers aren't going to find us. They're not even going to know we're gone for about a week. See? Excellent plan. And so we journey very slowly back to town. And of course, you gotta turn north. Always gotta turn north before you go back into town. Conveniently, we're teleported straight to Will's house, just in case we forgot where it was, and oh boy. There have been some cowboys in here. No, Will, your grandparents didn't do it. Kara looks around, but there's really only one thing here that didn't used to be. That I slightly missed, because of bizarre text controls. The Jackal? Oh no! Wait, who's that again? Find out next time. 
It's a cliffhanger. <laughs>